It's a hearty high five. Parenting and family. I want to talk to you today about choosing books for your kid and specifically books in a series. So you might have somebody that recommends a book to you that their child was maybe 12 when they read it, but it's a series. And so the next book came out when they were 14, the next book 16, and maybe the next book 18 or 20. For example, like Harry Potter or even the Twilight series, those books get progressively more intense. And as that child grew up, they were reading books that were progressively more intense. So it made perfect sense. This happened with one of our kids. Um, so you need to be aware of this because if your child's 12 and someone recommends Twilight because their child read that book at, at 12 years old, well then your child has access to all four books and they might complete that series by the time they're 12 or 14 even. So you could be in a situation where they have had access to content that is not really acceptable for them yet. So you want to be aware of this and you want to do your research so you don't find yourself having a conversation that you wish you would have waited a little longer to have. Marriage and relationships. I want to tell you a spooky Halloween story. One time when I was like 17 years old, I came home from school and it was storming outside pretty, pretty bad. And I don't really care for thunderstorms. So I'm just wandering around the house. Nobody's there trying to figure out what to do. And I decide I'm just going to go take a shower, like take my mind off of things. So I go into the bathroom, take my clothes off. It's at that exact time, big clap of thunder and the electricity goes out. So I turn the water off and get dressed and I am about to step outside the bathroom door when I hear a door slam. Happens to be my bedroom door because we had an attic fan and that's just the way things worked back then. One of our windows was cracked and it just made the door slam shut, just the sh suction through the house. So my dad comes home about this time. Now he sees the electricity is out and he pulls in the driveway, messes his hair up, sets down his briefcase, picks up a flashlight and does something like this. Yeah, he comes through the house looking like Jack Nicholson in The Shining and dragging his foot with messed up hair. I'm crouched in the corner of the dining room with a butcher knife because I'm 100% freaked out. I told my dad, you better stop right now or I will shank you. So listen, if you are going to have a scary time this Halloween, make sure your kids are probably at the appropriate age that it's going to be really funny like it was for me. Happy Halloween! Travel the world. Rebecca, do you remember where we were this time last year? Mm -hmm. We were in Salem, Massachusetts, one of the scariest towns in America. And one of the main reasons we went is because we were going to interview Ice from Hocus Pocus. So we decided we were going to take a tour to find the filming locations throughout the whole town. That's right. And we started out at the graveyard. That's where Ice and Jay pretty much come on the scene and bully Max the whole movie. Then we headed to Allison's house, very spooky at night for sure. We headed over to Old Town Hall where those parents danced all night long. And then we got to see Max's house and finally the high school where those witches went up in smoke. And that was all super fun. We had a lot of fun with that. But then it got kind of somber because we took a history ghost tour and we ended with the memorial to the Salem witch hunt victims. Who were executed there were 20 people that died in that whole fiasco that's right so if you like spooky and a whole lot of history you might want to check out salem massachusetts too news and current events if you take post malone and you add the dallas cowboys what do you get you get a brand new one-of-a-kind canes restaurant it just opened up in Dallas October 12th, and I decided to go check it out. When I walked in, I was pretty amazed. On the walls, there's all kinds of Post Malone stuff, and even inside the walls, there's a Dallas Cowboy vending machine where you can get uh, Dallas Cowboy souvenirs. There's a mailbox where you can send Post Malone mail. And there's even a suit of armor. I never quite figured out why that was there. On the outside, there's a 32-foot tall star that you drive through to get your food. And if you order the Post Malone meal, you get a big souvenir cup and a custom sticker. And let me tell you, the food is better under the blue lights. I give it five box combos out of five. It's a fast food experience I won't soon forget. Sports and entertainment. 
Who doesn't like a good alien invasion movie? And I've got a new one for you today. It's called No One Will Save You. And it's like if you took Independence Day and Castaway and put it together into a brand new movie. It stars Caitlin Dever, who was in Dope Sick and Dear Evan Hansen. And she does a phenomenal job dealing with all kinds of creepy aliens, tons of jump scares, and some really cool tense chase scenes. Now, there's only one line of dialogue, but don't let that scare you off because you're not even going to notice. And man, that ending, it's going to make you think. You're going to be talking about it for days and days. So if you feel up to it and you feel brave enough, you can check it out on Hulu right now.